Hello and welcome to this short series of videos about the 14th century anchoress and devotional writer Julian of Norwich. My name is Emma Pennington and I'm one of the canons at Canterbury Cathedral. For the last 30 years I have been reading, studying and praying with Julian of Norwich and like many have been fascinated by her life and works. Little could I have realised that her somewhat unbelievable life as an enclosed anchoress incarcerated into a single room would become so relevant for us in 2020. This series explores that relevance for us today. Who was she? Why did she self-isolate? What was it like to self-isolate in the 14th century? And could she possibly have anything to say to us today. So welcome to these talks on Julian of Norwich, a medieval take on lockdown and how to survive it. In this first video we ask the question, why did Julian self-isolate? Well the answer to that question is perhaps not as dissimilar from our own experience today. On the 23rd of March 2020, the UK followed China and a number of European countries and went into lockdown to stem the spread of COVID-19. In order to protect our most vulnerable and help the NHS cope, we were all asked to stay at home. And that's just what we did. For Julian, there was no lockdown. But back in the 14th century, there was an equally savage pandemic and the consequences of that may well have been a mitigating factor into entering into her own life of lockdown. I'm sure you know the nursery rhyme. Ring a ring of roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Not till I was much older, did it became clear to me that this nursery rhyme was about that terrible pandemic called the Black Death. Like COVID-19, it began in the East and highly contagious spread across the known world. It arrived in England in 1348 and by December 1349, when it died down, it's estimated that between 40 and 60% of the population had died. Unlike COVID-19, plague was not an airborne virus, but it was a bacterium that was passed through vermin and fleas into the blood. There was no self-isolating and no lockdown, but neither were there antibiotics or vaccines. Julian was only six years old when Black Death broke out in England in 1348. For a long time, scholars assumed that Julian had been a nun. Early scholars argued that the theological depth of her work and the use of rhetorical devices proved that she had to be a nun and educated as one. However, in her groundbreaking research, Benedict Award suggested a new identity for Julian. With very little to go on Julian the person, Benedict Award reassessed her text and argued that G Julian had been a laywoman. Following the first wave of Black Death, Julian would very likely have been expected to have married and have had children. But then, in the subsequent waves, which especially hit children and men, it was possible that Julian lost her entire family. Grief-stricken and still young, Julian could have married again, except something else happened, which redirected the course of her life and led her on the road of self-isolation to become an anchoress. 
In chapter 3 of her Revelations of Divine Love, Julian tells us what happened on that day, the 8th of May, 1373. And when I was thirty years old and a half, God sent me a bodily sickness in which I lay three days and three nights. And on the fourth night I took all the rites of Holy Church and believed not to live until day. And after this I languered forth for two days and two nights. And on the second night I believed oftentimes to have passed over and so believed they that, the, that were with me. And in being so young, yet I thought it was a great sorrow to have died. But for nothing was in earth that wanted for me, nor for no pain that I was afraid of, for I trusted in God of his mercy. But it was to have lived that I might have loved God better and longer for the time, that I might have the more knowing and loving of God in the bliss of heaven. For methought all the time that I had lived here was so little and so short for the reward of that endless bliss, I thought nothing. Wherefore I thought, Good Lord, may my living no longer be to thy worship, and I understood by my reason and by my feeling of my pains that I should die. And I assented fully to all, with all the will of my heart, to be with God's will. Thus I endured till day, and by then my body was dead from the middle downwards as to my feeling. Then was I stirred to be set upright, helped underneath, for to have freedom of my heart to be at God's will, and thinking on God while my life would last. My curate was sent for to be at my ending, and by then he came I had set my eye and might not speak. He set the cross before my face and said, I have brought you the image of your Maker and Saviour. Look thereupon, and comfort thee therewith. Methought I was well, for my eye was set upright into heaven, where I trusted to come by the mercy of God. But nevertheless I assented to set my eye on the face of the crucifix, that if I might, and so I did, for methought I might longer endure to look even forth than upright. After this my sight began to fail, and it was all dark about me in the chamber, as if it were night. Save in the image of the cross, wherein I beheld a common light, and I did not know how. Julian had always been a pious child, wanting to receive three wounds. The first was bodily sight of the pains of Christ on the cross, to stand where all his true lovers stood. The second was sickness, which took her to the very point of death. And the third, contrition, compassion, and a longing for God. Julian tells us that she forgot about the first two of these wounds until now. What followed from her seeing the cross take on a common light was a series of 16 showings or revelations which were rooted in the passion narrative but soon passed far beyond the gospel story and looked into the very heart of God's divine love for us all. Julian recovered from her sickness, but the visionary experience was to shape the rest of her life hereafter. Next time, we will explore Julian's life in lockdown and the world of a 14th century anchoress 
and our own experience of lockdown. Thank you very much for watching.